Battling the elements in MLS this week as seven more clubs reached the 20 game mark. There was the first Texas Derby of 2018, plus an all Cascadia clash. But we begin with top versus bottom in the Eastern Conference. Atlanta's star striker scored for a fourth game running last weekend. Gressel looking for Martinez. Well, DC United's new designated player made an instant impact off the bench. Rudy. Sides went head to head at Mercedes Benz Stadium. Commentary comes from Matt Jackson and Dan Roebuck. Here is Carlton looking to get forward. It's a decent looking ball, and the header from Martinez always just a little too high, I think, the cross. He yeah, just can't control the header, he always gets up really well. He's got a lovely leap, gets up early, hangs in the air. Here is Rooney to show the touch. There's Ariola. Real opportunity finds the corner. Steven it is that came through on that right hand side and just curled it into the bottom corner. And DC have taken a surprise lead here. When you come away, counter attack with pace. They have numbers forward, which is great. Left footed, good margin for error. Absolutely fine finish. This is Laurentiewicz. Starting again, incidentally, in MLS for the 360th time. Laurentiewicz, Martinez could be away here. Can he take a touch? Well, you've got to credit Osted for coming off his line so quickly, but could Martinez have done a little better with that first touch? It was difficult. This is Carlton. Martinez with a flick, Almeron looking now for Vialba, Gressel calling for it, three inside the area, Martinez! Brilliantly worked goal, Atlanta United a level here. DC United players are complaining that that was quick counter-attacking football. And it's an interesting one because Martinez, we know he's quality, we know he's a poacher, but this sort of goal requires some bravery. He doesn't really have a right to win this, he gets on the move. That's just a really good challenge, a really brave. Durkin coming forward, there is space out wide right. Fisher supplies the overlap, that's good. Rooney waits inside the area, it's towards Wayne Rooney, and the follow-up oh. is brilliantly saved by Guzan as Acosta came in from point-blank range. Well, this is a great opportunity, good ball in, that's a good first save, that's a really good second save. Escobar on the right-hand side, it's low. Areola's skewed clearance gives Atlanta an opportunity by way of a corner. And suddenly you feel that the game just becomes a little bit tense from the visitors' perspective. Escobar, Carlton, up against Acosta, that's great skill. The cross is in half bad as well! Finished by Martinez! Joseph Martinez yet again. They've doubled down, goal number 21 for Atlanta this campaign. This is a lovely cross, but they've got to move, that's the problem for DC, they're way too deep. And like all good poachers, be in the right place at the right time. Almiron is on that like a train, and now he'll race forward. Martinez off in support, still Almiron, it's towards Martinez, he gets lucky here, can he finish? He's around the keeper for the hat-trick! It's a travel for Martinez. Atlanta having been under pressure, strike on the break. Slice of fortune, but he's really trying hard to get beyond the defender. You know, he's making the run, he's at full tilt, and then he has the great awareness. Little look at the goalkeeper, great feet. When you've got that man in your lineup, you know there's goals somewhere pretty close by. The five stripes have beaten DC United by three goals to one. I'm very happy because initially we went behind. That's something we didn't expect. So we had to play better and we demonstrated who Atlanta are. The New York Red Bulls started the weekend six points behind Atlanta but had played three fewer games and they had the chance to keep up the pressure against the New England Revolution. 
the home team were nearly in front inside the opening two minutes. Aaron Long's header from a Sean Davis corner, the crossbar coming to New England's aid. The Revs were trying to avoid a third straight defeat, and their best moment came just after the half hour. Diego Fagundes with an inviting pass for Teal Bunbury, but Luis Robles at his brave best in the New York goal. The Red Bulls were labouring a little, but as the game entered its final quarter, they found a breakthrough. Mark Shatkovsky with the free kick that was turned in by Daniel Royer for his fifth of the season. If that opener was a little scrappy, Chris Armas' team made sure of their fourth win in five with a pinpoint passing move, rounded off by Kaku's cross for Bradley Wright Phillips. A 99th regular season goal for the Red Bulls number 99, and more proof that his team are real contenders this year. Chicago met Toronto for the first of two games between the sides on successive weekends. Nico Hasler and John Beccaro weren't involved after trading clubs, but the fire did hand a debut to former Toronto midfielder Raheem Edwards after his move from Montreal. He almost set up an opener for Nemanja Nikolic. TFC had two of last season's title winners, Jose Altidore and Chris Mavinga, making comebacks from injuries, but it was another of their star names who hinted at a return to last year's form when Sebastian Giovinco brilliantly broke the deadlock two minutes into the second half. Trying to avoid a league-high sixth home defeat of the season, Chicago responded just past the hour. Edwards returning Alexander Katai's free kick for Nikolic to glance home this time, last season's top scorer reaching double figures this term. But they were level for just three minutes before Jonathan Osorio scored a fine winner. His seventh MLS goal of the season ensured a first win in seven league games for the champions before they renew acquaintances with Chicago on Saturday. There was a rain delay ahead of kickoff on Saturday at Mafre Stadium, where both the Columbus crew and Orlando City were looking for only their second MLS win since the start of June. Phil Blacker is your commentator for this one. Jotun twisting and turning to find a bit of space for the shot, and he beats Zach Steffen with it as well. Jotun so close to the opener, we're just over a minute on the clock here. OJ Allen, unadvanced forward from full back in there, delivering deep. Everybody's missed it except Sasha Klesje, who scores his fifth Orlando goal, the Lions lead. It was missed here by Josh Williams. The ball in from Allen did a lot of the hard work. Comes through for Klesje to keep his composure. That's an awful. Well advanced with men in the middle, just over Zardes. Pedro Santos, though, is on mark, but Müller getting back to him. Did just enough to close the door. And Pedro Santos looked all set to equalise. And score what would have been just his second MLS goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Face on is for Nico Hansen. Will get there. And as well to find Sardes, who finds the equalising goal. The crew are level six minutes into the second half. Goal number 12 of the season for their top scorer, Jesse Zardes. Zardes, different game just at the moment. Goes down under the uh, challenge of O'Neill. No free kick forthcoming, though. Shane O'Neill on debut is able to come away with it. This is Higita to Yotun. To question making the run. Yotun has threaded it through perfectly for him. And in the middle to finish it off is Stefano Pino to restore the Orlando lead. Made by Question scored by the Brazilian for just his second MLS goal, his first since the opening day, but that's what Columbus were unhappy about. They felt there was a foul on Zardes right at the start of the move. Pedro Santos. A bit of room in which to work here. Which a good ball in for Mullins, fine save. Joe Bendick reacted smartly. The substitute goalkeeper, Patrick Mullins, off the bench on his debut, almost onto the score sheet. Santos with a long throw. And appealing strongly for a handball in there. Will Johnson it was. After the flick on by Mullins, not given. They have a case here, Columbus. The call. Goes again to Walsardis. Cleared only as far as Harrison after the pressure continues. Returns it in dangerously, and this time the referee has pointed to the spot. Sylvia Petrescu's given the penalty against RJ Allen. 
foul on Mullins in the eyes of the official. And the crew will get the chance to level it up right at the end here. Jesse Zardes from the spot against Bendik and beats Bendik into the corner. Zardes does it again, 2-2. Two, two. As tempers boil over at the finish. Only Joseph Martinez has more goals in MLS now than Jesse Zardes. His wolf trap in plenty of space to advance and to strike one. Oh, and to score a sensational goal. The captain to win it for Columbus, surely in stoppage time. Only his second ever goal in MLS, and it is one to remember. 3 2 to the crew. I'm just happy with the, the effort from the guys to go down one goal, to come back, to go down another goal, to come back, and then to win the game is fantastic. That's what we needed tonight, to be at home in the midst of a tough run of games. We came back and won the game. That's the most important thing. The Galaxy left it late in New England. Oh, the header down, oh, and the tying goal in the late stages. L.A. celebrates. And a go-ahead goal in stoppage time. Union were even later with their winner in Chicago. Buries it, and Philadelphia recovers the lead late. Could either go the distance at Talon Energy Stadium? Commentary comes from Dave Farrer. Kamara picks out the run, Dos Santos, and there you have one of the saves of the season. Andre Blake flicked out his right arm and somehow got it behind. Dos Santos can't believe it. Threaded to Sapong, is that the bit of luck? It is. The drought over for CJ Sapong. First goal for him since the 28th of April. Huge amount of fortune. And Philadelphia in front. Ibrahimovic again with Kamara running off him. Perfectly timed pass. Beautifully done. Ola Kamara with the leveling goal created with a feather of a touch by Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Goal number eight of the season for Ola Kamara. The Wolves ready. Oh, it's Alessandrini to drive it hard and long. And Blake to watch it all the way. For once, Ibrahimovic was the decoy. Nicely done there by Jonathan Dos Santos for Roman Alessandrini. Ibrahimovic is available. And Ibrahimovic puts the Galaxy in front. They have come from behind to lead in rainy Philadelphia. 12 for the season now for Zlatan. A wrestling match there on the edge of the six yard box. If anyone deserved a goal, it's him. Mikel Ciani seals the win here for the Galaxy. The other Los Angeles team, LAFC, faced a slightly shorter road trip to Minnesota. The Loons were aiming to make it nine points in nine days at TCF Bank Stadium. The form of Darwin Quintero has been a key reason for that impressive run, and the Colombian was outstanding again on Saturday creating the opening goal for Rasmus Schuller in the 25th minute. It was a first in MLS for the Finn. LAFC have more away wins than any other Western Conference side this season, and although they'd rested Carlos Vela back in California, their response was immediate. It was just a minute later when Latif Blessing teed up Benny Failharbour for the equaliser. His third goal of a season in which he started every MLS game. Victories here against Real Salt Lake in New England over the previous week had stretched Minnesota's winning home run to three matches, and they reasserted their authority in this one just before half-time. Quintero's corner wasn't effectively cleared, enabling Christian Ramirez to restore the lead, adding to his goal against the Revs on Wednesday night. 
And there was still time in added time for Minnesota to score again before the break, with Quintero getting in on the act himself. This was the third game in a row he's got on the score sheet, six of his nine MLS goals this season, coming in the last five matches. It proved too big a blow for Bob Bradley's men to recover from in the second half, as the Open Cup semi-finalists suffered a first defeat in ten games in all competitions. Miguel Ibarra piled on the punishment with the fourth, ten minutes into the second half, his sixth of the season. Just a couple of minutes later, and Minnesota had five for the first time in MLS. A second of the game and seventh of the campaign for Ramirez equaled the Loons' record margin of victory at the end of a hugely profitable period in Minneapolis, helping them close in on the playoffs. The first Texas derby of 2018 took center stage at BBVA Compass Stadium, and it was a game that got off to an explosive start. 48 seconds in, and Santiago Mosquera's cross was headed in by Matt Hedges to give FC Dallas the lead. Houston found an early response, another headed goal, as Rommel Kyoto picked out Mauro Manotas, and the Colombian scored his 10th of the season after a clever run. So 1-1 after eight minutes as it rained goals in Houston, and yet remarkably that was the end of the scoring, hard though both teams tried. Just before the hour, Michael Barrios ran onto Maxi Arruti's pass, and Adolfo Machado mistimed his challenge. The referee Hilario Grajeda pointed to the spot, and the replay showed that Machado had got things wrong by a split second. Roland Lamar had the chance to put FC Dallas in front, but Joe Willett saved, and Lamar failed with the rebound. Wilmer Cabrera was delighted with that, and soon it was his Houston team that was threatening. Within a minute, the Dynamo appeared to have taken the lead as Manotas turned in Demarcus Beasley's cross. It was a finish that sparked wild celebrations. But on video review, Manotas was adjudged to have been offside. It was disappointing for the home team, but clearly the right decision. There was one final chance to win it, and it fell the way of FC Dallas. Lamar again, teed up by Minor Figueroa, but his effort from close range glanced off the crossbar. A game that was full of derby drama, and one that finished 1-1. To Seattle now, where Vancouver travelled over the border for their first Cascadia action of 2018. Back at CenturyLink Field after an unbeaten three-game road trip, the Sounders were handed the chance of a perfect start in just the fourth minute of the match. A penalty was awarded against Daniil Henry for handball as he challenged Chad Marshall. Nicholas Ladero had scored from the spot in last week's draw at Atlanta for what had only been his second goal of the season, but the Uruguayan repeated the trick here as he sent Stefan Marinovic the wrong way. Ladero beat the goalkeeper again in rather less conventional fashion just over half an hour into the game to double his team's lead and his season's goal tally. Marinovic appeared deceived by the shot and dived too soon. The Caps were without the inform Alfonso Davies, who was left out of the squad due to increasing speculation over a move to Europe. They briefly thought they had a lifeline and a penalty of their own at the end of the first half, when referee Chris Penso again pointed to the spot for handball, this time against Marshall. The decision was overturned on video review, which showed Kendall Waston's effort striking the defender on the chest. Seattle handed a debut to new designated player Raul Ruiz Diaz in the second half, and the Peruvian was close to an early impact, played in beautifully by Ladero, but denied by Marinovic. It was turning into another frustrating afternoon for Vancouver, who'd lost at Montreal in the first leg of their Canadian Championship semi-final in midweek. They again appealed for a penalty when Jordi Reyna went down under Ozzy Alonso's challenge, and Efrain Juarez didn't deal well with a perceived sense of injustice. Booked for a foul of his own, he then made contact with referee Penso in the process of being shown the yellow card, and the Mexican was promptly sent off for the second time this year. The Caps have now lost four of the last five MLS games since the end of a six-match and beaten run. Four without defeat is the Sounders' best sequence of the season. The other Cascadia club, the Portland Timbers, faced Canadian opposition in the form of the Montreal Impact. Giovanni Savarese had guided the Timbers to a 12-match unbeaten run, but they were behind here halfway through the first half when Safir Tider fired home his fourth July goal. 
Portland level things up six minutes before half-time after a series of defensive mishaps that the impact goalkeeper Evan Bush won't remember too fondly. Samuel Armenteros, the man who eventually took advantage for his seventh goal of the season. Those noisy celebrations were soon cut short, though. Less than two minutes after the Timbers had levelled, they were behind again. A long ball finding Matteo Mancosu, who silenced the Providence Park crowd. On the hour, the impact might have given themselves a two-goal advantage, but Alejandro Silva wasn't able to take his chance, and it was a moment that he would regret. Five minutes later, Portland equalised for the second time after another Evan Bush misjudgment allowed Diego Valeri to nod home from Sebastian Blanco's cross. Portland unbeaten in 13, Montreal continued to improve. Finally this week to Rio Tinto Stadium and a Rocky Mountain Cup meeting between Rail Salt Lake and the Colorado Rapids. RSL coach Mike Petke was serving a touchline ban, but his side soon hit their stride and went in front in the 11th minute. A fine ball in from João Plata was converted by Croatian Damir Krylac for his fourth goal of the season. Plata then added one of his own just six minutes later to double the lead. Jefferson Savarino with the assist this time. And RSL were already well on course to make it 10 unbeaten at home in MLS. A 45-minute delay because of the weather soon followed, though, and the Rapids responded well after the restart and changed the game. The comeback started after Krylac's challenge on Johan Blomberg in the box. Referee Baldonero Toledo originally allowed play to continue, but changed his mind on video review and awarded the penalty. Jack McBean finished with a flourish from the spot to score his second Rapids goal since his move from the LA Galaxy. And they were right back in the game again with just over half an hour played at this stage. The visitors had taken just one point from their previous three matches and were running out of time to salvage another in the second half. But with just two minutes of the 90 remaining, a brilliant run from Edgar Castillo led to the equaliser. He was denied by Nick Ramondo, but sub Dylan Cerner was there to squeeze in the rebound for his first goal of the season and complete Colorado's comeback. A second consecutive draw for the Rapids keeps them well off the pace in the Western Conference. FC Dallas are four points clear at the summit, while Minnesota's excellent week has them on the brink of the playoff places. In the East, Atlanta extended their lead at the top to four points with New York City not playing. Toronto's first MLS win since early June doesn't change their position in the table, but it does close the gap slightly on the top six. Yes! We leave you with Joseph Martinez in his record-breaking sixth MLS treble. This copyrighted telecast of Major League Soccer may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of Major League Soccer.